So we're talking about Iron Man today. Yep, and you know what that means, Brad? Play the fucking song. Tony Stark is a comic book superhero who, for most of his fictional history, maintained his secret identity as the hero Iron Man by simply claiming that the Golden Avenger was his bodyguard. A secret he maintained for decades, right up until he inexplicably revealed his superhero alter ego to the world for a dog. So as you said, it's comic book Iron Man we're talking about today. Yeah, not MCU Iron Man, who has no such qualms about revealing his secret identity, because he does so in the first movie he appears in, to the world in a press conference, while sporting the most punchable beard of his life. I am Iron Man. There are very few MCU heroes with secret identities. Yeah, everyone knows who Captain America is. Yeah, everyone knows Captain America, everyone knows Iron Man. Everyone, everyone knows, knows the Hulk, everyone knows Thor. Yeah. Is there a Marvel hero who actually has a secret identity? Spider-Man. And Ant-Man? Yeah, I no, think. well, no, no, because the government know Ant-Man. <laughs> oh, okay then. Doctor Strange is called Doctor Strange. <laughs> That's his literal name. He's a Sorcerer Supreme. I've never noticed that. I think, I think Spider-Man is the only He's one. He's the only one, isn't he, who maintains his secret identity? And then throughout the movie, everyone figures out what his secret identity is. What the fuck? Secret identities, man. Bring it back. How pissed off do you get when you watch, like, the Marvel TV shows? and they refuse to call the heroes by their names, and they try and do that annoying thing that movies always do. They try and make you, the audience, feel smart for knowing what they're talking about. Like, they always refer to, like, the big green guy instead of the Hulk. And that's supposed to be for you at home to be sat with your going, talk about the Hulk. It's like, we fucking know. He's, like, the most popular movies in the world at the moment. We know who the Hulk is. It does amuse me how the, the Defenders, who are, like, meant to be sort of the, the street-level yeah. superheroes, have all got more powers than Hawkeye. Than <laughs> Hawkeye's an Avenger. <laughs> also as well, like I don't know if this is a spoiler, because obviously we're doing this just after the Marvel panel, where they revealed all the upcoming movies. Um, those TV shows aren't canon anymore, because the guy who they've got to play Blade, Blade's coming back, folks, is the guy who played Cottonmouth in uh, Luke Cage. I knew I recognised him. So that, unless, unless they do my idea of, like Cottonmouth didn't die, he's got bitten by a vampire. <laughs> He just got bitten by... Do you know what? I'll be, and that vampire is Wesley Snipes. Anyway, we, we need to move on and talk about Iron Man. Let's go. Oh, we have a chance to talk about Wesley Snipes. No, we, we, no, because people know what the joke is and it's pay your taxes, Wesley. <laughs> also, I want to know what he thinks about this because I don't think anyone's asked him yet as of the time of recording this. Because to my knowledge, he still every now and again tweets out hashtag make America blade again. So he's probably really upset. I hope he was sat watching that panel on like the YouTube or on TV in the Blade outfit. Just wiping, Wait, wiping a tear this, away this year eyes. will be my he's moment. He's just wiping his eyes with his tax bills. <laughs> he's his face, he's wearing the sunglasses and the tear comes out from behind the sunglasses. <laughs> that sounds like it's going to present itself as one of those like um, awareness TV campaigns where it's like it's in black and white. And then so do you, do you know an actor from the MCU who is salty about not being in movies anymore? And it's just him and Terrence Howard. <laughs> Terrence Howard from the first Iron Man movie. But when he looks at the Iron Man suit like the War Machine arm and goes, next time, baby, and then he's not in the sequel. <laughs> next time, baby. We need to do that. We need a support group for actors who are no longer in the MCU and are mad salty about well, just, it. No, it's actors who are no longer superheroes. So you yeah. have anyone who, who would be salty from other superhero franchises as well. Like, obviously, because... And Blade is an MCU, but now Blade yeah, is right, MCU. Yeah, characters who were replaced. Yeah. That's the one. Like, so who can go? We can get, do you know what? This is the Photoshop for whoever's editing this one. Either you or Nisha, if she's watching at home. Uh, so what we need is we need a support group now of them all sat around, like do the classic thing, the circle of chairs. Yeah. And we need, obviously, leading the group has got to be Wesley Snipes and his Blade outfit. <laughs> but who else can be at this support group for? People who are mad salt, they can no longer be here. So Terrence Howard's got to be there. Yeah. Because he's in Iron Man 1. Edward Norton. Yeah, Edward Norton, obviously the Hulk. Uh, is there any more who got replaced or just like, you know, that's kind of crowded out? I'm going to say, like, the main actors from the Defenders series, because they've just found out, like, that, oh, yeah, your series isn't canon. Fuck it, we're sweeping the So we've got Kristen Ritter, we've got, who plays Danny Rand? Finn Jones. Finn Jones, and we've got Charlie Cox, and then we've got Mike Coulter. I'm glad I remembered all their names. They're also there, but for whoever does the one of Mike Coulter, please just put him from Halo 5. <laughs> because he's in Halo 5. You've got to put that version of him in, like the CGI Halo 5 one. Is there any more actors like you? I, I reckon in the background is Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> because he wants, he to get wants in. it and he's not there yet. Fun fact Sylvester Stallone has been like, 
put me in these fucking movies and every time they just go, no. Andrew Garfield's definitely there. Oh yeah, he's there in the Spider-Man costume. Do you know what as well? I'm going to say that actor um, who played one of Thor's friends in Thor 1, who they yes. recast and no one noticed yeah. or gave a shit. <laughs> like, who else can we get in? Who else is mad Salt Lake Harbor in these movies now? I think that's it. I think, you know what? That's a good group. That's a, that's a good group of people right there. Is it Avengers Anonymous? It doesn't have a name because it's more sad that they're all just sat around like being angry that they can't be in these movies anymore. <laughs> Comic Tony is not like MCU Tony and he was less enthusiastic about the whole letting the world know I fly around in a futuristic turbo suit punching people. So he maintained for years in the comics and decades in our time uh, that Iron Man was simply his bodyguard, which is a thing they mentioned in the first Iron Man movie. And Tony starts like, no, fuck this, I am Iron Man. Well, uh, what the explanation was is that there is a bodyguard that I have who wears this suit that I made to protect me. Right. And the reason that I'm never around when Iron Man is obviously it's my bodyguard dressed in the Iron Man suit, that, you know, takes me to safety and lets me hide. And I think there are some comics where he'd let people wear it, like people that he trusted, like obviously who were in on the secret to wear it to like, you know, better sell to the public. Like, no, it's not me in the suit. There's another guy, but I don't want to reveal his identity. Obviously, for safety reasons, people might attack his family. So did people believe this? Did they think that Tony would dress up a bodyguard in a big iron suit? They did, yes. Like, and there, I know there's been a few skeptics who thought that Iron Man and Tony Stark were one in the same, but they were noted as being like, you know, a definite minority. Because obviously, one, Tony Stark would get people in the suit to like, you know, say, oh, it's a different person. Or sometimes you just get the suit to control itself and walk around next to him, because obviously that's the kind of thing he could do. He's a super genius. And not to mention that the persona Tony Stark crafted for himself publicly was that of like, you know, a dickish playboy billionaire. And with that in mind, it's understandable that people didn't think that he was dressing up like a Ferrari themed dildo and flying to war zones to fight tanks. I guess it's similar with Batman. I mean, Batman and Iron Man are quite similar anyway. Yes. But Batman, again, is one of those ones where I guess it'd be quite easy to sort of put two and two together. And say, and Batman say, has these like yeah. almost vast untapped resources and, there's only, yeah. and he only exclusively seems to like, you know, live in Gotham City. There's only one person who has those means and that is like, you know, a billionaire. But you look at the billionaire and go, yeah, but would he? Like, why? Yeah, then that's like the, uh, the public persona he affects when he's out and about. Another example of talking about disbelief in yeah. terms of a secret identity comes with that time Lex Luthor figured out who Superman was. Yeah, there's, people don't know there is a comic where Lex Luthor, he types in like into a big computer, like, okay, work out who Superman is. Comes up with the answer that Clark Kent is Superman. And Lex Luthor says, well, the machine's obviously wrong because why would the most powerful man in the universe spend his time walking around as a dumbass like a reporter? And the idea that basically this all powerful God would willingly spend their time as a normal earth man is just so crazy that even Lex Luthor can't believe it. And you bring that back to Tony Stark. Yes. He, why would you believe that he would put himself in danger when he's a billionaire? And all the stories you hear about him like pirated up on yachts and sleeping with supermodels. And you think, why would you give that up to go like, no, willingly risk your life fighting people? But this all changed though for a doggo. Kayfabe, do you actually want me to say doggo in this bit? <laughs> I do, because I still unironically find the word doggo hilarious, especially just how wholesome the whole thing is. It's like, okay, what, what is a doggo? Well, all dogs are doggos. What about puppers? Well, all puppers are doggos and all doggos are puppers. <laughs> and then there's like, the, have you ever seen the hierarchy oh, yeah, of doggos? Yeah. Where it's like, like your little tiny dog is a yapper and it goes all the way up to a big dog, which is a woofer. But a dog that's smaller than a woofer is called a subwoofer. <laughs> Right, so Carl, what, what happened with the doggo? Well, what happened was is that Tony Stark, as he often does in the comics, was giving a press conference about where the fuck he was because Iron Man had been spotted in the Arctic and they were like, well, where were you? And he says, well, actually, no, I was in hospital because I fell over in the shower. And that, that, I think that sums up how dedicated Tony Stark was to hiding his identity. Rather than admit, no, I was saving the world in this weaponized future suit like, of my own invention. I fell over drunk in the shower. But that reminds me of the thing that all women can do, the superpower, if you will, that women have when talking to men. Because men tend to be, on the whole, like rather, I know, squeamish and about, you know, some aspects of the female anatomy. So I love that women can get out of anything by just saying, I'm having woman's problems. And a man will you know what, say no fucking more. Because it reminds me of a mate of mine whose mum would like sneak alcohol into festivals by just going with like five of her female friends, getting a duffel bag and filling it up with like 50 boxes of tampons. <laughs> and what they do is just put booze in all the boxes of tampons. And obviously they said, 
If a man opens that bag up, he's gonna look, see five women, and they just go like that. And the bloke will immediately shut it and just like push it along. And if a woman opens it, she'll look and they just again just go. And the woman's like, oh, I understand. And that's how they snort alcohol in a festival. It's like, because obviously, no guy is gonna go through 50 boxes of tampons. We've been off topic a bit, so let's get back to the main thrust of today's video. And that is this doggo that revealed Iron Man's identity to the world. And this happens during that press conference I was talking about where Tony starts like, well, yeah, I fell over in the shower. Now yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. And he happens to notice that there is a car chase happening in the distance. Uh, I'd like to point out for everyone how like, the police are right behind this car. So chances are the car is going to be like, you know, caught, stopped, the criminals inside, arrested, and sent to prison. However, Tony Stark just so happens to notice that there is a doggo in the middle of the road that is about to get hit by this car. And he was there's only one person who could do something, and that person is fucking Iron Man. So he runs and just dives off the balcony, as obviously his Iron Man suit does that thing from like the Avengers where it flies or attaches to him and does the superhero landing on the front of the car, smashing the engine blocks to pieces and sending the driver through the windscreen at Mach 3, as the, and leaving the dog confused but relatively unharmed. Obviously the police arrive, arrest the criminal, and the world media who were gathered suddenly like, holy shit, Tony Stark is Iron Man, we need to start asking him questions about this. But Brad, it gets a little bit better, as it so often does when we make these videos, because guess who else just so happens to be watching this unfold? Who? Tony Stark's girlfriend at the time, who is understandably a little annoyed that Tony Stark revealed his secret identity to the world for a dog and not to the person sucking his dick. And in typical Tony Stark fashion, he doesn't give a fuck and he simply motions towards the dog with its owner, who is an adorable young boy saying, I revealed it for them. Couldn't he have just said, of course I'm able to access my own bodyguard suit? <laughs> no, no, he's Iron Man now, so yeah. Of course yeah, I have so, the capacity to put this suit on myself no, in case no. I'm in immediate danger and my bodyguard... No, 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 that could happen, Brad. So now, canonically, we can say that in the comics, Tony Stark reveals his secret identity for a fucking dog. Since it was kind of the topic of today's video, let's discuss superhero alter egos and our personal favourites for whatever reason. And I'm going to get things started with the Power Rangers. Of course, I love that no one knows that the Power Rangers are the five gymnastically inclined martial artists from school who all hang out together wearing thematically colour-coded outfits all the time. <laughs> and then when the new ranger turns up, a new person in that colour yeah. joins their and, friends. And the thing is though, they only ever wear the colours that correspond to the, like, to the ranger that they are. And no one ever notices. Time. Yeah. Green Ranger turns up at the moment Tommy Oliver does. The guy who only ever wears green, who starts wearing white when the White Ranger turns up. And it's like, how does nobody know? Not to mention that Lord Zed seems to send his putties to attack that field where Tommy does like, you know, his catters a lot. Is that one of the greatest running gags on TV though? The fact that because it's cobbled together from like a TV show from Japan, they have to keep coming up with excuses why the various rangers spent all their time in the park. So what's your like, favourite like alter ego for a superhero? Well, or? I've just realised superheroes will always have a nerdy alter ego or like, because obviously the idea is that that, that person can't be like, obviously Peter Parker's a nerd. Yeah. Um, Superman's a nerd. It's just more, it's bumbling idiot. Yeah. And I think with Superman, um, one of the, the best ways to explain it to someone who thinks, well, surely you'd notice they look exactly the same. It's actually done really, really well in one of the original like Christopher Reeve Superman movies where Superman is at Lois Lane's window and then two seconds later, Clark Kent knocks on a door. Mm -hmm. Even if you've just been staring at Superman's face, like, just in your head, the idea that like, someone could move that fast and come back in like a completely different set of clothes is just so unbelievable that obviously you, it's just hard to put two and two together. Yeah. So we briefly touched upon the idea that Clark Kent is a fairly good secret identity for Superman because like, you know, the characters are just so different in people's minds. So one that I like, which is the same idea but it's just handled so poorly, is He-Man. Because He-Man has the secret identity of Prince Adam even though he manages Prince Adam with less clothes on <laughs> and a tan. Because, like, if you look and you put Prince Adam and fucking He-Man side by side, it's exactly the same guy. He just takes his shirts off. He's like Oliver Queen, where he, for most of his comic history, he goes around with the most, like, obnoxious facial hair ever seen. He goes, like, the huge fucking, like, moustache. Oh, oh, yeah, he's got like, the Robin Hood. Yeah, classic yeah. moustache that he wears when he's being Oliver Queen. 
And no one ever seems to realize that he's the only guy with that mustache in that universe. <laughs> At least shave that shit off. <laughs>